I'd like to welcome you today to our devotional study through the book of Ruth. There are so many wonderful things that we can study as we come through the uh, book of Ruth. Um, that's just absolutely amazing. There's two books in the Word of God that are named after a woman. Uh, one is Ruth, who is a Gentile bride that finds a Jewish groom, and the other is Esther, a Jewish bride that is married to a Gentile. And uh, as we come into this particular book, there's just so many things that we can learn as the people of God, and there are also several parallels between Christ and his church uh, in this passage as well. And one of the great themes of the book of Ruth, at least eventually we see it, is rest. And friends, that rest only comes through redemption and union with our kinsman redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have seen here that Ruth is a story that is set in the time when the judges ruled. And uh, we know that in that time when judges ruled, that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And as we come through the book of Ruth, we see that on faithfulness has prevailed, and as a result, famine follows. And uh, this book is a testament to Psalm 34, verse 19, that tells us many other afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. As we come into this wonderful book, there's so many things that we've learned already as we've looked at the land of rest forsaken in verses 1 and 2, and we looked at the place that they departed from rather than trusting God there. We've looked at the meaning of their names, and certainly they were not living up to the meaning of their names uh, as we come through these verses. And now here we are, we have found that when you leave the land of blessing, that there is always distress. And we see that in verses 3 through 5, as Elimelech, Malong, and Chilion die. Now we find ourselves in verse 6, where Naomi comes to herself and realizes she needs to go back to Bethlehem, Judah. She needs to go back to the place of blessing. So it says there in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, Then she arose with her daughter-in-laws, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Moab. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her father's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they be grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. So as we come to these verses, we see what has happened there is, as we looked at previously this week, we saw that they had, because of famine, rather than trusting God, rather than getting right with God, they decide that they're going to go to Bethlehem, Judah, in verse 1, to sojourn. In verse 2, they continued there, and in verse 4, they dwelt there about 10 years, and then we see that uh, Elimelech, in verse 3, died, and then in verse 5, Malong and Chilion died also, both of them. And the women was left of her two sons and her husband. And we see here, you know, very few people intend to continue in the, in the land of sin and disobedience. But that is exactly what happens here in the book of Ruth. And as a result, they pay a tremendous uh, high price for that. And then we see in verse 6 through 13 that Naomi makes a decision to return to the land of rest. And uh, it says in verse 6, Now she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. Notice this. For she heard, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. So even here, it's a sad scenario. Naomi is deciding to return home. But why is she deciding to return home? Is she 
returning home because she realized that going to Moab was not in the will of God? Is she returning home because she knew that they had been living in disobedience to God and that was why the famine had come upon Bethlehem, Judah, and now she wanted to do what was right? There's no indication of that in this passage. I mean, we could hope that that surely had a part to play in it, but the truth of the matter is there is nothing in this passage that indicates that Naomi is deciding to return to Bethlehem, Judah, because she is repenting of what they have done and she's acknowledging before God that it's the right thing to do. But rather, as we look into verse 6, she is returning to Bethlehem, Judah, because there's food there. She's heard of God's blessing upon Judah. And uh, because of that, she wants to go back. And uh, so we see here that, you know, her motives are not completely right for going home. She's going home because now things are good there physically. And um, rather than acknowledging that it's the right thing to do. But another thing that we can learn here, you know, you know friends, we just don't do right. Or we don't, we don't go the way God wants us to go. Simply when God blesses us, we do it all the time. And that's what Naomi is failing to see here. She's not serving. She's not obeying because she wants to obey. She's obeying because there's food there once again. But what we see here is this, that the Bible tells us that she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and giving them bread. Keep in mind, back in those days, there was no social media. Uh, you know, you weren't able to easily get information. But yet she heard of the blessing of God upon Bethlehem Judah once again. Friends, when God blesses us, others will hear. And it is a testament to them of our obedience to the Lord and, and his desire to bless us because of that obedience. And it tells us here in verse 6 that then she arose with her daughter-in-laws. Uh, you know, she's gone through all kinds of distress. She's gone through chastisement for walking out of the will of God. And the Bible says that she arose from all of that. And then notice this in verse 7. It says, Wherefore she went forth out of her place where she was, and her two daughter-in-laws with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. Notice, wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was. She is separating herself from the Moabites, finally. Separating herself from these people that God calls his wash pot. She's separating herself and doing that which God has called her to do, separating from the world and separating unto God. And, and it's just a reminder that separation always precedes sanctification in our lives. We cannot truly be set apart for God, set apart for the work of God, and set apart for, the, for God working in our lives until we first of all separate ourselves from this world, separate ourselves from all of those uh, things that are hindering us in our walk with God. Remember back in Genesis chapter 12, we, put, we saw that principle of separation in Abraham's life in verse 1, where it says there, just give me a moment to get there, Genesis chapter 12, and in verse 1 it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. So we see there that the story of Abraham's life of faith began with God, that God called him. But notice this separation. It was a call of salvation and it was called the separation here. He says, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Let me give you one more verse. There's others that we could look at for separation as well. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we find this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. We really could read verses 14 through 18, but let's read verse 17 because of time. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You want God to receive you? You want to be at the place that God can bless you? Well, separation needs to happen if you're going to be at that place that God can really use you and that God can bless you. Separation always precedes sanctification in our lives. And we separate ourselves from that which is worldly, that which is wicked. Um, you know, because then and only then that we can truly be set apart 
for God and his work. Romans 12, 1 and 2 teaches us that exact same principle. Have a great day.